Sports fans, join the Rod Squad newsletter today. Stay ahead of the game with exclusive insights, updates, contests, and exclusive content delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up for free today at rodpeterson.com. Who knows, you might get the thoughts of Joe Lazito in one of those newsletters. He joins us from the Coliseum Chronicles podcast from the Hockey Pod Network. What's going on, Joe? You know that's a John Frenzy. Joe Lazito. That's keeping his memory alive, Joe, every time I say it. Every time you say it, I get goosebumps, Roddy. Uh, I'm doing great. And uh, if I might, if I may, can I please wish my son a very happy birthday today? He turns 24. Hey, happy birthday, the younger Lazito. It, is it another Joe or what's his name? It is the younger Joe Lazito, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go, man. I, I hope, hope he makes his 24th a great one. Now, look, you listen to this show every day, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. So it's a pleasure to have you on uh, and rep repay the favor in a way. I want to start with your Islanders, with the NHL training camps opening up today. I feel like they don't, for whatever reason, get a lot of pub. They're not getting a lot of pub. And I had them initially picked to not make the playoffs this year, but you kind of scared me into changing my pick. <laughs> Do you think they're going to be all that this year? Well, this year is going to hinge on the back of Ilya Sorokin. So it recently came out that Sorokin had back surgery in the offseason. And I guess, it, you know, similar to the quarterback in football, the Islanders are very reliant on Ilya Sorokin. He's one of the best goalies in the world. And if he comes back healthy, I do think they will definitely be a playoff team. If the forwards click, they had a Duclair. Uh, maybe they're a, a you know top four playoff team, but if not, maybe they're a bottom four playoff team. And once you're in, you know anything can happen. For sure. Um, are they expecting miracles out of Patrick Waugh? Because to be honest, I think you and I talked about this last year. The Islanders came through here in Sunrise, and my buddies uh, at the game in the press box were saying, "Oh my God, Lane Lambert's making miracles. This team is terrible. How are they even winning any game?" And then he gets fired, and King Rawaz brought in. Are they good or are they not good? You mentioned goaltending. Oof. They're a very defense-heavy team. And, you know, they say in sports, defense wins championships. And they're coming into the season with seven, uh, six healthy defensemen. They have a really bright prospect named Isaiah George uh, that they're getting from London, who's going to start the year in Bridgeport. So you're coming in with a, a very solid defense core and Sorokin. They are a good team. They're a little light in the scoring, which uh, I guess they're hoping that Duclair adds a little bit, playing on the top line with Horvat and Barzal, maybe get uh, another player for Barzal to play with. But they're, they're better than the national media gives them credit for, I will say that. Fair enough. Absolutely fair enough. Um, it's funny because you guys up there in the tri-state area, Devils, Rangers, Islanders, are a little like your own world, sort of like Florida hockey down here. You guys are all paying attention to what the other guys are doing. Like, you know the Rangers are going to be the best team in the division. I believe that, but I'll throw this to you. Who has more points this year, the Islanders or the Devils? Because everybody's thinking of the Devils are going to make that major catapult up with a new coach and a new goalie. Well, I think, again, we're talking about the goalies. I think if Markstrom comes into New Jersey and he fits right in, uh, I think the Devils could challenge for the division. I honestly thought they'd win the division last year if they would have uh, acquired a better goalie. I thought they had all the makings of a championship team, and they never went out and got that goalie, and you saw what happened. So uh, I would be afraid of the Devils more so than the Rangers if Markstrom is a good fit. Uh, the big thing with the Rangers this year, we're going to see how much of a distraction the Shesterkin contract is. Uh, he wants a lot of money, and uh, that sometimes that becomes a distraction. So if they end up paying him, they're going to have to unload some players as well. So We'll find out what happens. Of course, being an Islanders fan, I hope it's just chaos in the city all season. Okay, Joe, don't get upset. There's a funny comment and then, then one that might upset you. Scott in Vancouver, this is a funny one. Uh, not a funny, but he's like, maybe John Tavares will go back to the Islanders after this year. Any chance of that, do you think? Or do they hate him for leaving so much he could never go back? It, it's funny that that comes up. I'm one of the few people here on Long Island that still loves John Tavares. I will always love John Tavares. I don't 
blame him as much as 99.9% of the fan base does, including my wife, who still can't stand to see him on TV. So uh, I would welcome him back with open arms, but I think I'm in the very, very small minority there. Well, as they say, you can't go back. Very rarely do people. Some do, and and it works sometimes, but I don't. I don't see that happening either. Jeremy in Winnipeg says, "If you think the Islanders, how they play defense, can win a championship, you're delusional." Sorry. Uh, I've been called worse. And I didn't say the way the Islanders play defense is delusional. I say that's the old expression, defense wins championships. So, um, no, the way they play defense, uh, you know what? We have uh, Noah Dobson. He's uh, teetering on the Norris Trophy talk here. So, um, no, the Islanders are not a championship team as currently constructed. But I like our chances uh, from the net out with the goaltending and the defense. But uh, I'll take delusional any day of the week. I'll probably be called worse in about an hour, so it's okay. I've certainly been called worse. <laughs> um, what's your beautiful wife's name, Joe? Andrea. Okay, because A. Lazito is watching and writes in and says <laughs> he didn't say the Isles were winning a championship. <laughs> she's uh, a classy she, dame uh she's very protective she's very she's you know people take a look at me and I'm, I'm a bigger person and i have this look about me and they think i'm the one they need to worry about and the reality is i'm not she's the pit bull in the family uh go google joe lazito everybody that'll keep you busy this afternoon if you want to know who i'm talking to here right now and he says his wife's tougher than what you're going to read but please can you explain to me and our audience, the Rangers Islanders fan rivalry. Just explain where it is now, where it's been. Because you're like me, Joe. We've been around a while, we've seen a lot of things. Just explain that rivalry, if you don't mind. So, Roddy, as you know, uh, I call us vintage. We've seen it all. We're, we're the old school fans. And uh, for I'm 54. And for fans of my age, we know what the fan rivalry really was like. It was phenomenal, and it's similar to, I'm sure, what people in Western Canada and Alberta and uh, the Nordiques and Canadians fans experienced once. To be honest with you, the rivalry and the fan rivalry, it's like the world now. It's soft. Um, they're still it, – it's different. You know, everything nowadays, you know, you get people chirping on social media as opposed to, you know, there were some games you went to and the violence in the stands was almost as much as the violence on the ice. And I'm not condoning that. It was just a fact. And you never went into the garden with an Islander jersey unless you had 10 of your buddies with you and – um so it's definitely st it's still there. I do get a chuckle every time I see networks talk about rivalry night. Like you know, come on, really? It's not like it used to be. But I guess for uh, for nowadays and the way the sport is now, it could be a rivalry. It, maybe it's the best rivalry in sports uh, or in hockey, but it's nowhere near what it used to be. Thanks for explaining, because around here I've been wearing a lightning shirt a couple times over the last week, and some Panthers fans have made a mild shot at me and i'm like you guys you don't know a rivalry i don't know what that new york one is but i know what it is in calgary and edmonton and there's a very good chance you won't get out of the building if you're wearing the other team's shirt and that's like in august if you're wearing a golf shirt yeah. you know in a restaurant uh mm -hmm. by the way so J jeremy in winnipeg says cheers joe so he didn't want to start a fight uh, Wayne <laughs> in Victoria, Thanks, BC. wayne in bc says i love the beard mr lazito so anyways, Thank you. we covered it all. Uh, Joe, again, happy birthday to Joe Jr. Thanks to Andrea for tuning in. And don't be a stranger, pal. Maybe promote your podcast before I let you go. Yeah, so I have a podcast called Coliseum Chronicles, The Penalty Box. If you're uh, someone who enjoys the rougher style of the game and like to hear some career retrospectives of some of the toughest players to ever drop the gloves, it might be the show for you. And it's available on all platforms. Good stuff, Joe. Thanks, man. Thanks for everything. Most of all, thanks for being you. Thanks, Roddy. Appreciate it, and go Bills.